Uh, Monica, good afternoon to you. Uh, we just learned about this a couple of minutes ago uh, in a tweet uh, from the president. Take us through what we know. And our colleague uh, Carol Lee had reported that Esper had, in fact, before uh, the election or, or around the time of election night, had drafted a resignation letter already in anticipation of this. Yeah, incredible reporting by my colleagues, Carol Lee and Courtney Kuby, who've been documenting the president's displeasure with Secretary Esper for months. We've seen it aired publicly and also privately, according to their reporting. And three defense officials had told them that indeed Secretary Esper had drafted this letter before last week, before the election, knowing this could be the potential outcome, and that the president, as one of his first acts, if he had lost, or even if he had potentially won re-election, would have moved to get rid of some cabinet officials whom he had clashed with. At the top of that list, according to this tweet that we're now just seeing, it appears to be Secretary of Defense Mark Esper. And now we also understand something that may have contributed to this is the fact that Secretary Esper would have maybe renamed or made it easier to rename some of the military bases, something that the president was very much against and had made that very well known. And because of that, he knew he was maybe going to be a target. But really, Casey, it shows you that this is the president's sort of first act in a post Joe Biden as the president elect world, right? This is the first official business that we see him doing and something really that reminds people that he is still the current occupant of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue behind me and can do all of these things, especially as a lame duck president over the next 70 days or so. And we can expect, we're told by White House officials, there will likely be more of this action to come in the coming weeks. But what stands out here is that we haven't seen the president do any public events over the last four days, apart from golfing at his golf course in Virginia over the weekend. So this is the White House signaling to us that the president is now back in the Oval Office, having these meetings, doing things that are a little bit more normal, as opposed to over the last few days, all we heard from was all of these baseless claims that he made on Twitter today, now firing his defense secretary and replacing him with someone else. Again, probably a preview of what we're likely to see in the coming days, Casey. Monica, I imagine a lot of Americans are looking at this and wondering, you know, he lost the election. He is going to be leaving the White House. Why is the country better off without a confirmed defense secretary in place uh, than they would be with one, despite uh, President Trump's? I mean, there's only a couple, you know, a few months left of his administration. Are we just looking at another instance of his chaotic uh, personality coming to bear here on government? Frankly, Casey, we're about to report this out a lot more, but it strikes me as this is an executive who wants to remind the American public that for at least the next few months or so, he is still the commander in chief and can make these decisions when really for the last few days, he's been mostly sitting by the sidelines, complaining, airing his grievances, believing that this election was somehow stolen from him, making claims of voter fraud that, of course, are completely not backed by any evidence. There has been no widespread voter fraud. We can't say that enough. But he is a president who's on his heels and who in the next few months, as he is going to be leaving the White House, I think many aides around him would say he may be the outgoing president, but he doesn't want to go out without a fight. And this may be where we begin to see other action in other areas as the president, uh, to me, what this signals is him accepting the reality now for the first time in a more concrete way that he is going to be leaving Washington and the White House. And so he's trying to make these last moves while he can that reflect his preferences that he was sort of waiting to make until after the election. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.